good evening to all of you. I'm very pleased to address this National Peace Summit 2022, organized by the Council of Justice of the Peace of Sri Lanka. It is a privilege to be here at this event. The two most important ambassadors raising the occasion as we celebrate people who help us to advance prosperity and peace. I'm taking this opportunity to congratulate all the valuable people who are being honored in this remarkable event for their service in the field of peace. My hearty praise goes to the management of the Council of Justice of the Peace of Sri Lanka, who is actively making progress and contributing to the betterment of their members and community at large. I have been invited previously to their events, and the way they operate is commendable. The honest effort they put in for success is what makes all the difference. I wish good luck to the entire team of this organization. As a parliamentarian, I am here to represent the interest of the Sri Lankan people and their aspiration to thrive in this difficult time. We must invest in our people. When people are forgotten, the country becomes fractured. Only by hearing and responding to the voices of the people, we can create a bright future that is truly shared by all. The nation's greatness is more than the sum of its production, and the nation's greatness is the sum of its citizens, the values, pride, love, devotion, and character of the people who call that nation home. Sri Lanka is a wonderful place to live and prosper. But what happened to us? That is a big question. We need to learn from lessons from themselves. We need to learn lessons from ourselves and the other countries as well. When we provide the essential to the people who are struggling to get up from the pit, they can make their pit a platform and rise and do wonders to the world at large, especially to the nation. Dividing the people and creating chaos in the communities can be seen as another strategy to gain power at the moment, but in the long run, it will make the nation pay. That's what happened to us. We have defaulted even though we have the resources that can strengthen our economy. For instance, Sri Lanka's apparel export industry, I used to work as a state minister uh, textiles in Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan apparel export industry is one of the key sectors of our economy. The industry has recorded substantial growth levels over the past four decades and is currently the country's leading export accounting for approximately 44% of total exports, and providing about 33% of the manufacturing employment in the country. We have built a competitive edge on value addition rather than cheap production costs, with greater emphasis on product quality and its ability to manufacture niche products. But even though we need to work hard to learn with some operating challenges, such as steep price, increase in raw materials, and increase health and safety costs. I believe our beloved friendship nations like Japan and New Zealand would provide a platform to expand the industry earning by investing and engaging in the business with the apparel industry. I would like to take this opportunity to your excellencies to consider this request and provide a way for our people to thrive in their country by working hard for the betterment of the nation. While we are at it, I also want to emphasize another sector which is contributing vastly to the Sri Lankan economy, tourism. Tourism has traditionally been the third largest foreign exchange earner in our country. Tourism has become a very promising sector of the Sri Lankan economy. We have recorded over 1.9 million tourist arrivals in 2020, 2019. But in recent years or two, as a result of the pandemic, the figures in tourism, <coughs> in the tourism sector began to deteriorate. 
it's that time for us. I hope that the friends of Sri Lanka, such as those who have been gathered here this evening, will try to promote tourism, which has become a very, as I said, a very important function or aspect of the Sri Lankan economy. And we have very cordial relations with Japan and New Zealand. I hope we will have more tourists from those friendly countries. Of course, Sri Lanka has all the ingredients of, for a flourishing tourist country. Because Sri Lanka has both natural beauties and history, very interesting historic sites. Sri Lanka offers a mix of attraction, include that, including beaches, wildlife parks, rainforests, tea plantations, ancient ruins, Buddhist cultural sites, and festivals as well. With the prevailing current economic crisis, I believe these two sectors can play a vital role in increasing the foreign exchange reserve so that we can feed our people. When people are fulfilled with their essential needs, they will be able to create new things and contribute to the betterment of the country. I strongly believe that we can see the light end of the tunnel, but it is a long and hard journey. When we can collectively work together with friendly nations and our people, we will be able to create a platform for them to prosper. I hope Japan and New Zealand to provide a boost to enhance the lifestyle of the people, and I hope this will open new vistas of cooperation for us. As a nation, we are ready to lead by doing the hard work. Let us prepare to make all kinds of sacrifices for the prosperity of the people of this country and to make Sri Lanka great again. Let's continue looking at ways to improve and do even better uplifting the life of our people by providing means to thrive in these difficult times. I would like to conclude my speech with this quote of, by Joshua J. Marai. Challenges are what makes life interesting and overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. As Sri Lanka, we have an opportunity to make our life interesting and meaningful. Let's work together and prosper. Thank you for listening and thank you for great opportunity to giving me. Thank you for all and thank you my guests and thank you the people who came here to celebrate this event and thank you once again. Thank you.